reactions continue to trail the negotiations between the federal government and organized labor on minimum wage. The organized labor says suspending the ongoing strike for one week allows for seamless negotiation with the federal government's delegation while appealing to Nigerians for understanding. The labor leaders said this at a joint National Executive Council meeting of the Trade Union Congress and the Nigeria Labor Congress. Arise correspondent Punarimam Benjamin reports. The NLC and TUC's decision to suspend its strike for one week comes as a relief to many Nigerians. The strike action, which ended on day two, follows a temporary agreement by the two labor centers, NLC and TUC, to resume talks with the federal government. There has been controversy between the government's offer of 60,000 Naira and the labor's request for 494,000 Naira. But some citizens in Abuja think the decision to suspend the strike is coming too early, while others say it is a great step. I'm not happy. I feel that the labor unions should do more than this for the staff. Everybody is disappointed right now because the strike just started and then the conditions to me, I feel that they are not met. What government should do is they should look at the conditions that these unions are given. Now, if they cannot afford to pay the um, 400 and something thousand, they should bring it to at least a reasonable amount of money. If they are considering the private sectors, it is understandable, but let it be at least is something slightly above what they are offering, 60,000. They shouldn't have called off. Uh, they should have remained resolute and continued the strike. Uh, we have the kind of government who doesn't listen until when there's things like strike. So if we are labor, I would want to continue the strike until when the government do what they are supposed to do. Well, it's uh, actually, it's a sign of relief to some extent, but uh, we hear that they have not actually fully resolve the issue. So going forward, we hope that since they have accepted to call off the strike, going forward, they might be able to resolve and then suspend the strike indefinitely. I would say it is timely in the sense that incessant strike is not, it doesn't all go away for development, even for even the government and the citizenry. So calling off the strike, I think, is the is, is ideal thing. But I, I pray that this uh, calling of the strike we we all go away for the for the civil servant and even the government. Now that the labor unions and the government are returning to the negotiating table, Nigerians will be hoping to see that whatever decision reached will better the lives of many Nigerians. Punarman Benjamin, Arise News. Responding to the minimum wage impasse, Mr. Osita Okechuku, a former director general of the Voice of Nigeria, appealed to organized labor to desist from the danger of throwing away our baby democracy with bathwater, which could destabilize the economy, spiral into unintended consequences, and harm our fledgling democracy. According to Okechuku, a laborer is entitled to living wage, especially in the midst of stagflation and declining living conditions. However, he advised labor to adopt house ownership for every worker as middle ground to augment the 60,000 naira offered by the government and the private sector. Joining us now is Osita Okechuku, former director general of Voice of Nigeria. Good morning, Mr. Okechuku. Good to see you uh, today on the show. You're welcome. Good morning, Sister Ayo. Good morning, Dr. Ruby. Good morning, Incisive uh, Rufai and your audience worldwide. Morning, sir. Mr. Kechuku, you are still on this uh, uh, mortgage uh, housing as an option. In the first week of May, you issued uh, a statement talking about stagflation, Abraham Maslow's hierarchy of needs, Tinubu's renewed hope, 2.5% national housing fund, uh, but Labour just did not listen to you. They are saying they are not looking for housing. They are not looking for Abraham Maslow. They want minimum wage, and they've made their position very clear. If they get good money, and they are well paid, and they have good uh, labor conditions, they can go and build houses if they want. They don't want to rely on uh, uh, government's uh, mortgage. But you keep insisting that uh, they should look for housing fund. The 2.5%. Uh, 
Uh, is anybody listening to you at all? Uh, thank you very much. The, my position remains a humble appeal that uh, Maslow, in classification of the hierarchy of needs, placed shelter, food, at the bottom of the human needs. And Plato, a philosopher of renown, also said that necessity the mother of invention. I agree with labor that there's economic hardship. I agree with labor that there's declining standard of living of all of us. I also agree with them that it's not been easy for families to put food on the table. But I'm saying that if we pour more, push more cash into the economy, that we are told in primary economics lessons that if much cash is chasing few goods, it will lead to low purchasing power parity. And the same work as the labor is advocating would will get poorer. And there will be increase in, hung in hunger. We already have a stagflation, an economy that is stagnant, an economy ravaged by inflation. And then you are advocating for 200, 400,000. When you have that, it will lead to cost pool. So the same stagnant, uh, stag, uh, stag, uh, stag inflation. So the wealth of the laborers or the wages of the laborers that is increased will not be meaningful to the Nigerian workers. And I'm saying that I've looked into what the federal government is offering and the private sector agreed to that, that they said 60,000 as minimum. And they also said they are, going, they are working diligently to provide transportation, the shared variant. And they're also trying pushing more money into agriculture. They're also try, uh, pushing more money into medium and sm small scale enterprises. And they will also maintain some of the freebies they are giving to alleviate the suffering of the people. And I said there's a missing point. And that missing point is that there's a national housing fund the act established it dates back to 1992. The United Nations Convention on Economic, Cultural, and Social Rights also recognized the need for the worker to have shelter. And if you go back to even our own constitution, the chapter two, where it talks about fundamental objectives and directive principles of state policy, also talks about the importance of shelter. So we are saying, how come that labor, after the bouquet of requests, what they allocated to housing was only 40,000? And they said they got it wrong. That a man or a family that has their own house, even if it's one bedroom, they have inner peace. Shelter is not just about shelter alone. It improves on the living condition of the worker and the family. It also encourages health because there is some inner comfort. It's a basic right, for God's sake. And labor should not miss it. If you look today, there's inflation of the hyper type. I agree with that. But if you are getting you want, you are you are advocating for more money. One, what is the issue on the street? The contest. The contest is that labor, yes. If you pay them one, one million per month, I have no objection. But the contest is that the availability or the affordability of what had been agreed, about 12 states had not paid 30,000. And they didn't, most of them did not do so out of cruelty of the governors, no. The mistake we make in this, our own dear country, is that we do not consider the demographics and the differential on the different conditions from one state to the other. Yes, in Enugu, for instance, the governor there is taxing both the petit trader, the Kekana dri uh, dri uh, driver. In Lagos and other places, there's a lot of taxation going on. But there are certain areas of this country where you could not 
generate that kind of revenue from the people. Otherwise, there'll be a huge revolt. So that's why I'm saying that our democracy had to be looked into, our baby democracy had to be preserved in the staccato of the voices. And the federal government as well, both the organized private sector, I understand they have 12 members in the tripartite, uh, tripartite committee, the federal, state and local council 12, and labor 12. I expected the labor leaders, because for God's sake, labor is acting as if they are coming from the moon. The labor works in the Federal Ministry of Finance, they work in the Accountant General's Office, they work right. in the State Accountant General's Office, right. they work in the State Ministry of Finance, they know the accruals. That money is not there. What President Tinubu had achieved right. by removal of first subsidy yes. is that he has stopped the money being borrowed to, to augment the first subsidy. That stoppage is what he had done. But he did not get much accrual as is expected. In 2002, $4 billion we are borrowed for okay. first subsidy. Well, Mr. Kechuku, that does not translate Mr. Kechuku, that $4 billion is being accrued by the, Mr. Kechuku, the federal government. Information. In the re recently released um, ad, um, Accelerated Sustainability and Advancement Plan by the Minister of Finance and Coordinating Minister of the Economy, this government is going to be paying subsidy up to 5.4 trillion naira this year. So even more than last year. So the subsidy is not gone. So your argument about the removal of subsidy and savings from that is, is not correct, as now the federal government has demonstrated that they are still actually paying um, up to five point up to five point four trillion naira this year in fuel subsidy. But let me go back to your um, um, talk about the mass low hierarchy of needs. Part of the, that need at a very basic level is not just shelter. There's also food, clothing, and Currently, food inflation in Nigeria is at 40 percent. With the recently uh, released um, statistics from the National Bureau of Statistics, what would you say about that? Because the needs of the workers in Nigeria is not just shelter. I understand, yes, yeah, shelter will play a huge role. But break it down to me, 60,000 naira. And um, Labour has put forth their arguments, positing a family of um, six, two adults, four children. How will this work? How will this work in terms of um, survival? How will this work? Even with the house? No, no, what I'm saying, I'm not trying to neglect any aspect. I'm trying to say that the worker is already contributing 2.5% for housing. All the state governments of the Federation are doing one thing or the other to improve agriculture. The federal government as well is investing huge in agriculture to provide food on the table for the Nigerian people. They're also investing huge in trying to secure the environment so that there will be production going on. So I'm, I'm not neglecting that, but I'm saying well, well, that's the challenge, Mr. that Kechuku. for the workers. Mr. Mr. Kechuku, the, that's the challenge that Nigerians have. It's yes. this plan, trying, planning. What is, the, what is on ground? currently. So trying to provide security, trying to provide food. But this, the reality is that these things are not in place. We have food inflation, like I mentioned, at 40%. No, this, this, a lot, this cost a lot, of food a lot, prices. Is, so a lot is I, I understand it could have been that. Worse. Yeah, oh, it could have been worse. So let them at least meet their needs currently yes. in, re, in relation to the cost of goods, because you cannot take planning to the market to buy food. You cannot take intention of this government to go to the market to buy food. So I understand what oh, they are trying, they are trying, but if it's not in place, then you cannot ask the Nigerian worker to not make demands in order for them to have a take home package, something to take home with them at the end of the day. Uh, my sister, we are not on zero level, for God's sake. Please take, take time to go around and see what government is doing at all levels. So it's not as if the government is insensitive to the plight of the people. They, 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 they are in the same environment. The, the, the government is investing in agriculture, is investing in security, is investing in health. Look at the bouquet of every budget, both at the local level. We cannot just collectively pitch a whole all the expenses on salaries. I'm saying that doesn't make sense. I'm saying what could cushion the hardship of the workers that is tangible and have been demonstrated throughout history. It's not new. 
You, it, when you go to the UK, when the UK introduced the, the, the mortgage housing for every worker, today about 70% of the British people own their own houses. Similar thing goes across the globe. Today, China is doing the best to, to, to emulate what they have been done in Europe. You could see houses sprouting up every day in China. What does it do? It is targeted at getting the family to have inner peace. So I'm not saying there are no other needs, but I'm saying both the federal, state, and local council are doing much to provide the other necessities. But one had remained central. That was why the National Housing Fund was created. As far back as 1881, there's a law, the conveyance law, that is telling the, the, the colonial government that you must provide houses for these people. Back year in and year out, there's the model law that concerns mortgage model law. It differs from one place to the other, but the central issue okay. is that if the average okay. worker has okay. where to stay okay. and sleep, that it, it makes for better productivity and happiness. Okay. The first thing is, you see, I like to deal with empiricals. You can call me Mr. Empirical. Have you put a cost to this housing? Have we even taken a data stretch of the workers that don't have housing as we speak today? Is it in the federal civil service or the state civil service? The federal civil service, I know there are about 1.2 million workers. And have we put a cost to it? And do we also know that this will also come in at you know, are you saying we should give them single digit rates? The federal government recently put in 100 billion into the national housing scheme and all of that. That probably will not be enough in a country where you have millions of housing deficits. So I think next time in this argument is, let's also put a cost to it so that we even know what we are talking about so that it, it becomes more emergent. Secondly, you made a point about if we increase spending, if we increase minimum wage, definitely, we know inflation will go up. Definitely. It happens in every society. I can give you a historical reference. Udoji was a clear example. It will go up. But the problem that we are not looking at, that we should talk about, is the problem of wealth distribution, which is not evenly distributed. Although the figures say our GD coefficient is 35, which is better, but when you look at it, that money is just distributed al along a few people, politicians and their aides and all of that, which doesn't trickle down to the economy. So the question I'll ask you is, how do we redistribute wealth properly? You serve the Buhari's administration that said they want to bring 100 million people out of poverty in 10 years. I know that dream now is already a pipe dream because Buhari is gone. We forget that. How do we redistribute wealth properly? Thank you very much. The easiest way to redistribute wealth, one of which is the shelter I'm advocating. You talked about 1.2 million federal staff. The private sector employs tenfold more than the federal government of Nigeria. Yeah. And if giving support, if giving support, they could also provide houses for their staffers. Same is the local council, same is the subnationals, the state. And I'm saying, what is wrong? There are international agencies that support genuine housing programs of any country of the world. They are open to help Nigeria. But they have seen that your national housing policy has been dormant. If you tell them you want to penetrate housing in Nigeria, which is one of the easiest way to distribute and deliver prosperity to the poor, more than 80% of federal staff do not own their own houses. And part of what they split here for every year is the for housing. It's more than one third, because it's not only that house. You are talking of CNG buses. Assuming there are clusters of houses where the, the staffers are living, it becomes very easy. For the driver of the bus, he lives in that neighborhood. 
He collects, easily collects the, 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 the staffers to office and back. But today, if you get the, the reason, like in Abuja or in Lagos, for instance, some workers are living in Agege. Right. Some are living in Korodu. Some are down there in Oshodi. How do you pick them? All right. So the, it, it had to be targeted at the workers. And it could be enumerated and made cheap and transparent. All right. All right, Please, all right. let us not lose hope on ourselves yeah. that we can't do anything because we will we'll continue to be corrupt. No. All right. Let's believe in ourselves. We believe the, the, the in The Labor ourselves. Union should repre be represented in the committee that will execute it. All right. Yes. Thank you so much for your time with us this morning. Mr. Osita Okichuku, thank you. Thank you.